Welcome to Amplifier's interview series. My name is Christian, and joining me today leads the marketing effort at Jet Thoughts, Grayson Fulbright. Grayson, welcome to the series, my friend. How are you today? I'm doing well, Christian. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to today's uh, subject because we we haven't yet covered it in the interview series just yet. Uh, so let's jump right into it. We're talking about salvaging a project. So maybe to start us off, what are some common problems that you tend to see when a company comes to you with a software project that needs saving? Yeah, that's a good question. And of course, you know, there are very, well, there's a lot of different situations that you can run into, but I, I wanted to just touch on some of the most common ones that we've seen. Um, I think the easiest trap to fall into and the most common problem is a complete lack of visibility. You know, no one on the team really knows what's going on in the code base. You know, th there's a fragmentation of, of who knows how things work um, and then how everything should work, which is that, that you know, uh, future state. Um, and this just makes it a lot harder to even start in trying to pick a project back together again because, you know, you can't see progress. It's harder to actually organize the team to make fixes. It's then harder to keep timelines and maintain alignment. So, you know, visibility is a big issue that we see. And this happens naturally for, you know, development teams where people turn over or, you know, people who hold that bus factor might, you know, let go or move on to a new company. So, you know, before you can realistically fix any um, project in whatever state it's in, you need to take a step back and be able to understand, you know, who was working on what, what state everything is in, what's blocked, and really what, what are the big obstacles in the way that you're going to have to organize the team around to, to fix. You know, uh, all problems have solutions. So, I mean, in this case, where do you guys normally start in these situations? You know, for example, how would Jet Thoughts, you know, make this happen? Yeah, it's a good question. And it's, it's not as hard as it sounds. I mean, the, the very first thing that we like to do is, is create alignment. Uh, kind of going back to what I just said, right? Generally, we come into these projects and everyone is confused. People aren't confident about the, the code base itself, maybe the, the, the releases that, that they're putting into the code base. And so the first thing we want to do is make sure everyone is on the same page. Everyone who has knowledge can speak up so that we're, we're all aware of, of what's truly going on in the background. I think that gives us the, the foundation to really have a, a clear plan, which is so important. Structure when you're trying to, you know, take a, a big, sometimes old code base that is complex and there's a lot of unknowns. You really need to have good structure at the very beginning so that everyone knows what to expect. Everyone knows um, exactly what they're going to be held accountable for. You know, from there, once, once we get that alignment, it's really just a process of, you know, careful diagnosis. Of, you know, where are things breaking? What, what's going on in either the code base or in the, the team's process that's causing things to slip through the cracks, that's causing bugs to occur. And so we need to get a, a feel for what exactly is going on. Um, this is also where, you know, testing and, and verification is, is super important. You know, that's part of our process, but we are, are we really emphasize this idea that, you know, you need to be test driven and, and you, you leave this salvation through testing, because then it makes it easier and faster to work with the team to solve problems and, and make changes. Um, and then finally, just documentation. I feel like a lot of these issues that, that we've seen could be solved by just having good documentation practices at the beginning, so that when you do have issues arise, when you do have team members leave, or you know some, some bugs that get more and more and more complicated, you, you have all of that background knowledge and you have all of that information that can help help you get out of holes without digging yourself deeper in. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on the the idea of documentation and, and having that data. You know, I've worked places where, you know, we were stretched thin and one person was doing a job and all of a sudden they left and nobody knew how to do their job. So, um, you know, definitely documentation, you know, from the get go um, is, is such an important thing, you know, when projects fail or they feel like they're failing, you know, people can get really disheartened. You know, they put a lot of time and energy uh, into, you know, the projects they're working on. So do you have any last tips or pieces of advice you would like to share for anyone who's struggling to salvage their own project? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest one that I could like 
partake, so to anyone listening here, is, is to really focus. Um, I think a lot of times the when these projects get into a state to where it doesn't look sustainable over the, the short term, or if they lose team members and it seems like the, the project itself is unviable, you know, there's a lot to chew off and a lot to digest. And, and that's perfectly normal. We're, we're dealing with code here. So, you know, I think first thing is you need to understand that it's not realistic to try to fix everything at once. There, there is no magic wand solution when it comes to digging through legacy projects or projects that are in a rut. Um, but what is possible and what, you know, is, is you know, shown to, to uh, drive success is taking little steps. That's why structure at the beginning and alignment is so important, because if you can bring that visibility, if you can bring everyone on the same page and have a good plan for how you're going to tackle the biggest obstacles that you found, then it's just this kind of small stair step process where you focus on what's important. The goal is to reach more and more stable releases and create more and more incremental progress. And if you just focus on that and just know that, you know, it's a big uh, initiative to take on, but we'll do it in little steps. It, it helps with team morale. I think it also helps with if you're working with, um, you know, uh, an, an outsourced provider to help you with this. It, it helps ensure that everyone is on the same page, regardless of what we find or kind of what we need to fix. Um, and then to kind of go along with that, it's always best to simplify things as you go. I think, you know, everyone has their own development styles and that's often what causes problems in code bases is, you know, we, we might all use the same language, but we all have our, our ways of architecting solutions or, or kind of how we, we speak to, to other parts of the code base. And so one really good tip is as you're documenting or as you're diagnosing and then starting to go through to try to find a solution, test and verify it, try to simplify it. Try, try to actually simplify not only the, the knowledge of how things are done, uh, but potentially you know, solving how things are, are, are written in the code base, make it more streamlined. You know, I think one thing that we all have to uh, keep in mind is that we are using people to work on these projects. And so if it's, if it's not clear or if it's not simple, you know, even people with, with a lot of experience at that company or a lot of expertise, it might be difficult to actually get to that end goal because things aren't very easy to understand. So, you know, focus is very important. And then if you can, simplify, simplify, simplify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simplification, uh, you know, focusing on what's at hand and, and having good communication, I think are all very highlights of all the things that you're talking about here. Um, you know, there's, uh, I know, I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into what you guys do, uh, especially in this area when salvaging a project. So if people are looking to find out more about what you guys do at Jet Thoughts, where can they go? Yeah, you can uh, visit us at jetthoughts.com, uh, one word. Um, and yeah, feel free. we've got resources. Um, we've got a pretty active blog uh, where our, our founder, you know, speaks a lot on projects like this and speaks a lot about how we're, we're actually helping specific projects like this. So uh, feel free to reach out with any questions or you can also uh, connect with me on LinkedIn uh, backslash Fulbright B2B and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Awesome. So go check them out. Uh, links, of course, are in the description. Grace and I just want to say uh, thanks so much for joining a super interesting topic. And, you know, I hope people uh, reach out, uh, especially if they're having that struggle uh, with their projects to uh, see what you guys uh, can help them with at Jet Thought. So thanks so much again for joining today. Definitely. Thank you.